In this session, we are going to talk about higher order constructs, hierarchical component models. Now, what is the concept of hierarchical component models or higher order constructs? Higher order constructs, they are also known as hierarchical component models in PLS SCM. They provide a framework for researchers to model a construct on more abstract dimension that is referred to as higher order construct and its more concrete sub-dimensions referred to as the lower order constructs. Higher component models, HCM, refers to more general construct that is measured at a higher level while simultaneously assessing several sub-dimensions. Hence, by specifying lower order components, HCM covers concrete traits of a more general conceptual variable of interest. Let's take an example here. ECC, LC, EC, DC. These are the four lower order constructs. Sub-dimensions of this higher order construct, CSR. And this CSR is actually influencing organizational performance. Now, what are the advantageous features? So before going into the advantageous features, let me repeat a few things. So this here, ECC, LC, EC and DC, these are the sub-dimensions, lower order construct for this CSR, which is the higher order construct. Now, one can do what, what one can do is they can look into individual impact of each of these dimensions on organizational performance. But what the advantage of higher order construct is that they can reduce the number of path model relationships, thereby achieving model parsimony, which is a hallmark of scientific research. Now, instead of specifying relationship between multiple independent and dependent constructs in a model, researchers can summarize the independent constructs in a higher order construct as is done here, because these four are the sub dimensions of CSR. So instead of linking each of these sub dimensions, we can have a more parsimonious model and just link CSR with organizational performance. Because in this research, my interest is linking CSR with organizational performance, not each of these dimensions with organizational performance. So if, if I make higher component model or higher order constructs in my study, this will help me achieve this objective. Now making these relationships from then lower order constructs to the dependent constructs in the model obsolete. Now this becomes obsolete and this is this first model here CSR to OP is more advantageous. Now some of the other advantageous features higher order constructs also help overcome bandwidth fidelity dilemma according to which there is a trade off between variety of information that is bandwidth and thoroughness of testing to obtain more certain information that is fidelity. Now here in this case where each of these dimensions are linked to organizational performance we've got a, a more variety of information whether each of these dimensions is significantly linked to organizational performance but this one here will give us more thorough information because we are interested in linking CSR with organizational performance. Here the variety of information is minimized. Typically, bandwidth, bandwidth is used as a synonym of complexity and variability. Now, here we have got higher bandwidth because there is higher complexity and variability. The opposite of bandwidth is narrowness. On the other hand, fidelity is synonym of accuracy or synonymous of accuracy and specificity. The opposite of fidelity is impreciseness. Now, here we have got a precise relationship being checked. CSR linked to organizational performance. Now finally, higher order constructs provide a mean of reducing collinearity among formative indicators by offering a vehicle to rearrange the indicators and or constructs across different concrete sub dimensions of more abstract construct. So you can reduce your collinearity among the formative construct by arranging your construct into a higher order construct. Now, the difference between formative and reflective has been explained in another video on the channel. Now, there are different types of higher order constructs. To reap the benefits of higher order constructs, researchers must address at least three concerns. So, what are those concerns? 
First, the higher order construct conceptualization and specification needs to be grounded in well-developed measurement theory. In fact, this step can be challenging and tedious as developing a new measurement scale. Now, before you decide on whether you have got a higher order construct or not, you need to decide whether there is a theory, specific literature available for it or not. Whether your model will be reflective or formative. Now, this depends on the conceptualization of your higher order construct. Specifically, when implementing a higher order constructs, researchers have to decide on 1. The measurement model specification of the lower order components. The relationship between the higher order component and its lower order component. Now, it can be reflective, it can be formative. Now, this depends on the conceptualization of the scale. In existing research, you will find CSR and its lower order components related based on reflective reflective and reflective formative as well in both good papers and good journals. All those papers are published in good journals. Now, in your case, if you are taking this as reflective reflective, there should be theoretical justification for it. Otherwise, if you are taking it as reflective formative, you need justification for it as well, which you will find in existing research. And the difference between them is explained in the other video on the differences between reflective and formative constructs. As a result, research has proposed four types of higher order constructs. And those include reflective reflective, reflective formative, reflective form, uh, formative reflective and formative formative. Now let me elaborate this a little more. Let's go back here and look at this scale. Now let's say if I assume, now in this case I have said that okay all these four are forming CSR. So this is reflective formative because I've taken it as first order reflective. What if I take it as second order reflective as well and change the direction of arrows backwards? What does that mean? That means that CSR as a construct will still exist even if I do not include economic dimension or legal dimension. Ethical dimension and discretionary dimension will still compose CSR. So although I'm not just saying that they, are, they can be used interchangeably, but what I'm saying is that even the deletion of one of the constructs as or lower order construct, the higher order construct will still exist. So in that case, I could have taken it as reflective, reflective. But in my study, I have conceptualized it as that these four dimensions together create a CSR or form a CSR. So in that case, even if the deletion of one construct or lower order construct will actually uh, impact the existence of CSR to, to be precise. So that's why I've taken it as reflective or first order reflective and second order formative. Now moving on, on the concerns. Now, these are the type of higher order constructs. Reflective, reflective, if you see that these are first order reflective, second order reflective. The arrows are pointing towards the indicators. For higher order constructs, these lower order constructs will serve as indicators. Reflective formative, first order reflective, second order formative. So these lower order constructs are actually forming the higher order construct. Formative reflective, these x1, x2, x3 are forming the lower order constructs and this higher order construct is reflected in these lower order constructs. And formative formative, the lower order constructs are or these indicators forming the lower order constructs, lower order constructs forming the higher order constructs. The most common are type 1 and type 2, reflective reflective and reflective formative. Now the second concerns, researchers can choose among different approaches to identify the higher order constructs. Now the prominent approaches are repeated indicators approach or two st stage approach. Now how do you analyze the data? So there are different approaches in order to um, identify the higher order constructs. Now these are repeated indicators approach and two stage approach. Normally we use two stage approach. Now third, evaluating the measurement quality of higher order constructs is, sli is highly challenging. So there are, uh, the, when, when we establish the quality criteria for lower order constructs, it's different than establishing the quality criteria for higher order constructs. 
you will have to see the outer weights the significance of outer weights you will have to have a different criteria and different analytical methods utilized hopefully soon we will have video on that as well now some authors do not assess the reliability and validity of the lower order components and higher order components so this is one of the concern other erroneously interpret the relationship between higher and lower order components as structural model relationship instead of assessing the lower order components as elements of higher order constructs measurement model now this is another mistake that we commonly make you have to assess the validity of the higher order construct as well rather than looking at the influence of lower order constructs on the higher component model or the higher order construct researchers frequently analyze the discriminant validity of the lower order constructs they neglect the discriminant validity assessment of higher order construct as a whole now this is another mistake we commonly make we commonly make when we are doing the reflective uh, reflective model now how do we specify higher order construct analytically how do we do it in uh, pls or smart pls uh, there will be a video uh, soon on that as well now researchers have proposed several approaches for specifying and estimating higher order constructs the most prominent ones are so there are two approaches that one can use extended repeated indicators approach and two stage approach now becker in 2012 with others have evaluated both approaches for reflective formative type higher order constructs in large scale simulation study their results show that extended repeated indicators approach pr produces smaller biases in the estimation of higher order constructs measurement model that is the relationship between lower and higher order constructs there is a smaller bias when you use extended repeated indicators approach in contrast the two stage approach shows better parameter recovery of path pointing that is pointing from exogenous construct to the higher order construct and two from the higher order construct to an endogenous construct in the path model so you've got better parameter recovery i normally prefer the two stage approach and within two stage approach i normally use the disjoint two stage approach the extended repeated indicators and two stage approach they actually typically produce similar results when small signs when small uh, when sample sizes are sufficiently large so you have to be considerate about your sample size now this is your extended repeated indicators approach and what you do is this is second order construct higher order construct and this is the exogenous variable influencing the higher order construct now what you do is you draw connection from your y5 or the other exogenous variable influencing the higher order construct to the lower order construct and same same goes for reflective formative or formative formative now in future i'll be having a detailed a session on using extended two stage approach and or rather embedded two stage approach and disjoint two stage approach as well and then we'll be discussing in detail how to validate higher order construct how to validate higher order constructs with lower order constructs as well now this session was all about the theory of higher order constructs i hope after this session you would have understood the conceptualization of higher component models or higher order constructs thank you very much now uh, these are a few references that one can look into this is a very good paper recently published by sastet and others on uh, in australasian marketing journal so one can have a detailed look into uh, this particular paper thank you very much